I'm all the way up I'm all the way I need to go to the hairdressers anymore. I think it's okay. <laughs> See, it looks nice. <laughs> and then it goes to this. Back to reality. This is the work it took to get to that stage. I'll try to make it short and sweet. The bodgy piece of wood that I was lifting up to the roof was the thing that I used to make the stencil for the hoop that will hold the window frame together. It looks like I've gone backwards. The race is on. I need to make a new one of them or extend that one. And I need to make the hoop. That's the next thing. And then I've got these to fall back on if I'm feeling energetic. Last priority. Look at how budgy my stands are. They nearly rusted away. I found them on the roof. Then look at how budgy I'm lifting it up. I'm trying to level the boat up with the top of the window frame and I'll make the actuators 90 degrees to that top window frame. That's where I've come to the conclusion. And I'm doing it with a laser. I don't know if you can see the laser. Pretty much just going parallel with the that straight edge. If I was smart, I would have done this grinding when I did that grinding. I'm an idiot. I was even thinking that while I was doing it. I thought I had to adjust the heights a bit, but she's pretty good. So the way I get the fiberglass templates is I just make paper ones up first, and that's gonna go that way. This one is going... Oops, sorry. <laughs> Don't look at me. That way, like that. And then I have to cut them out, which is a pain in the butt. I normally just cut sheets of it like that and blunt my scissors. This will be the top mounting points for the side pillars. I'm just waiting for this to harden. While I was waiting, I made this and this. These are probably not gonna be the final shape of the bulkheads. Yeah, at least I've got a decent template now, but I need to figure out where these actuators are going. I need to stop doodling around and just guessing how I'm gonna do it and actually start making it. So this should get a little bit more exciting. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got to take off these back panels. These just screw off. Somehow plow some holes and I'll probably have to completely modify this side. And this side will be pretty straightforward, I hope. I probably could have gotten away with half of the amount of stainless steel box that I bought. I'm not going to probably use very much of this smaller stuff at all now. They're all going to be big, so they will be offensive up the front probably, but I'm hoping I'll be able to get them further across than what I originally thought. That's why I've leveled the boat out. Now I'll be able to laser plumb bob where each post is going. So then I can m make some measurements on, on this and then actually make some spots where the actuators will go in the hoop that holds this whole window assembly together. So, uh, and it's about to rain really heavy and it is so hot. I am dripping sweat. <laughs> I really need to fix my roof. So this is where I'm cutting the posts. I'm making it with the big box 
um, to there at least. I marked it out on this frame, so when I pull this off and then flip the thing over, I'll be able to figure out where that's going. <laughs> and same on the other side. I'll definitely have to beef up the dash in this area. This is where I was gonna have the wireless phone charger. This side is pretty thick. <laughs> it's exactly 1485 from the floor to the windowsill on both sides. That's crazy. That means I got the floor in level. I did not think that the floor was gonna be that good. And all the other, I don't know, maybe the whole thing's wonky, I don't know. I just got a material list together. I'm gonna try to favor using the big box. Uh, it's just gonna be easier, but um, I've got a couple of uh, different iterations that I could try. And I really need to make it so it's easily removable. So it might end up being yeah, easier than I thought. <laughs> That mess will be the side pillar top mount. All right, so now I've got all the measurements for the actuators from all of the different points. <laughs> now I just need to make it go up to here. So I'm cleaning the boat up. Hopefully never see these dummy windows again. We're back to the start of the video now, sorry going with the bigger box on the actuators so the actuators can fit inside the box. It won't be as fiddly to build. Should be real strong, but heavy. Just at the moment, she's flimsy. Notice how straight it is here. Everywhere else is all right. And it is so awkward to, to avoid up. warping, I should have braced the back of the edges better before I started bogging. I don't want to fill all of this up with bog. I know it's going to change the shape of the window, but I'm hoping it'll still work out because this should be just for the inner sleeve and it goes flat from there up to there pretty much. Instead of using lots of bog, I'm just gonna glue this sheet on like that. And then after that's dry, I'll use a flat board and, and straighten it up as much as I can. And then I'll, I'll just bog the edges. I'm just using gravity to hold it down. I'm so glad I didn't get rid of these dumbbell weights. So I nearly got rid of them. <laughs> I use them all the time. It's much better than it was. Okay, that's what I'm gonna bog to. Hopefully it's the right shape. I got lots of things going on now. The actuator, the top frame, the hoop, and the, these things. I need to make the aluminium side window frames. Making a jig made sense. I've never made them before. I make a good line on the center of each angle. This is where each join will be. I cut a chunk of wood the same size as the frame just to help me mark out where the frame will be. I cut a perfect shaped dummy window so I can make a wooden border around it easy. I leave a gap at each corner so the frame can fit through. Screw it together. Then I flip the piece of wood over and do the same thing on the other side. This should make it symmetrical. I cut the aluminium frames to length. I use small pieces of wood screwed into the jig to hold the window frame down. I use thick spaces of wood to space a panel saw up. Then I cut on my lines. It's fiddly getting it to the precise size. But by the second one, I got a lot quicker. Once everything's cut to the right size, I use the little pieces of wood to hold the frame in place while I weld it. Now we're up to welding it, which is the easy bit. You can see I've got the panel saw adjusted, so it's just touching the melamine. I've got an aluminium cutting blade in it, and I go real slow. The frame's thin and it bends real easy. So I've got a Langmar crossfire with the torch height control. Best thing I ever got was the torch height control. And something that I absolutely love about it is the program that it comes with 
you can just make a straight line cut because I need to make that into a triangle and you'll see why. I, I think it's not the done thing, but I'm not the best at welding and I think it'll help me from blowing through the aluminium. Feel free to tell me if this is your expertise and that's not the done thing. You just put in which way you wanna go, which is X plus, and then the cut length, which I just estimated to be 90 mil. I want it to cut at 500 millimeters a minute and torch sharp control. And then you just press generate, done. I made it too small. This is where I put the hunk of steel behind the join. The aluminium doesn't bond to it. At first I just do a series of tacks, then I do a solid finish weld over the tacks. I'm not saying it's right, but this is how I did it. After the welding's done, I just grind everything nice and flat. This is Stacy's first ever weld. We did a quick practice and she got straight on to the real thing. Welding's fun, you don't get itchy, you just get burned. But in typical Mickington fashion, I'm absolutely spewing. I've cut this to the wrong size. This bit here needs to be cut off because I don't wanna to have to make a mounting point for that. And that'll also make the window slightly bigger. Only 10 mil, but yeah. It's enough to be a stuff up. Luckily, I bought twice as much aluminium that I needed. Uh, it was cheap and I must have known that I was going to stuff it up. <laughs> this is why I need to cut the flap back. It'll change the height if I cut it off now. So here I go, cutting the flap off. Fun, fun, cutting aluminium with the circular saw. I should have moved the Arnold table back further. Oh, I'm so glad I still got my fingers. I hate doing that. But now I probably have to change where this line has to be because the join needs to make everything line up. I'm not sure. This is the only thing that happened differently. So I'm just going to cut that off with that. And um, when I cut it, I only cut one side and then cut that one and that one, lobbed it down, made it join up nice here and then I saw that I was too long on this one. So that was it. Wasn't as bad as what I thought it was going to be. That went together a lot faster. This is how crappy the welds look. Um, I'm just making sure that I... Also notice that I've got a blanket over the frame this time. That's because last time I didn't have a blanket there and all this splatter went all over it, the frame. After I grind it, then I flip this wood around and then put this in to make sure it's going to be the same as the other side. And to hold it flat when I weld and the And then other side. now I've just got to weld this back side, which I'll leave a small bead on. Why do my welds always look like this? I've got the gas turned right up, the ball bottoms out or tops out. Ugh, I'm really not that good at welding. <laughs> I can just Imagine Lionel and Donald saying... <laughs> that looks good now though. I'll polish it up and, and that, make it look a I little bit it a little flatter. So the table's not completely straight. I need to level it out a little bit because I want it to be straight, obviously. And I leveled it out with paper and a couple of slithers of wood, which... Uh, it was very lucky. <laughs> it's good there. Oh, now I need to do that side. I've got the outside form work done. The dilemma that I have now is I want the actuators to go through the hoop. I want to be able to have like a flange or a nut and bolt kind of thing. It's only holding it this way and this way. It's not holding it this way and this way. So all it's going to do in the window is steady it. So I'm thinking I might be able to get away with just honeycomb. What do you guys it think? It feels like all I do is make templates and shapes. Um, but this is going to be the first layer of honeycomb shape. I thought I'd throw some of this stuff in just for anyone new. It's called basalt cloth. It's poor man's carbon fiber. It says that it's made from a natural rock sustainably sourced, 10 times stronger than fiberglass, 
twice as strong as steel and nearly as strong as carbon fiber at a fraction of the price. The cloth can be used with any resin to calculate the amount of resin needed. Use the same weight of resin as the weight of the cloth being used. Then add some extra resin for the substrate soakage, one meter wide, also on rolls for additional cost. Yeah, basalt cloth. So yeah, I thought I'd just give her a shot. The guy at AA Composites said that Another great thing about it is apparently you don't get itchy and some boat builders won't even start construction until they've got a heap of this stuff. I'm going to bury this stuff in the middle of the fiberglass because I'm probably going to end up uh, grinding a lot and I don't want to grind the good stuff away. I should have cleaned the table first. Oopsies. So this $138 for 10 meters, for 30 meters of chopped strand, a bit heavier, a lot heavier, 450 gram is uh, 150 bucks. And the thing I love about AA Composites is they've always got things that I don't know that they've got like little rolls of uh, chopped strand like this. And sometimes they've got these in cut lengths as well in cut rolls and you, know, you normally end up cutting it all into strips anyway so this saves time and it does it way neater than however I cut it. I hate cutting the fiberglass. <laughs> if AA Composites is watching this it'd be awesome if they had these cut up in smaller uh, rolls as well. Different sizes, I get it. And this is why. You normally cut it up into strips anyway. Now for the fun task of cutting all the fiberglass. I know why all the boat factories have proper CNC fiberglass cutting machines, it sucks. I think there'll be some proper boat builders cringe looking at how badly I cut the glass. So I'll just stick it up there for now. Hopefully she doesn't break while it's up there and it lands on me. Cutting more fiberglass and basalt cloth needs to be infinity strong. I thought I had to get down a lot of fiberglass last time. This is a million times more. <laughs> Look at it. I've got to remember where all this stuff goes. <laughs> I've got some extra fiberglass cut up just in case, because I'm worried that the honeycomb won't bond to the, the fiberglass. So that's why I've got lots of chop, because I want it to have a lot of resin in it. And then after I've got all of this laid up with all the honeycomb and everything, I need to lower this and squash it down into the table. I'll screw it into the table. I'm using polyester unwaxed mixed to 1% in hopes that it'll give me enough time to get the whole lot together before the resin sets off. The temperature in my shed is about 30 degrees Celsius. I thought I'd just slow the video down here so you could see this weird thing that I'm doing now. I've put down some chopper gun string. This is my attempt to make it stronger sideways force. When the actuators are fully lifted and the roof is up, it's gonna have a lot of stresses on this part. I did it in many different layers, buried in fiberglass and basalt cloth. I'm hugging the edges with the string because the part is way oversized. I'll cut this part down once I know precisely where all the actuators are going through this part. didn't happen as smoothly as I would like. I think it should be okay. This has been squashed down. 
very, very unscientifically <laughs> by batten screws. Probably going to be a little bit wavy, but nothing some bog and stuff can't fix. The main reason I wanted to do that was to squash the honeycomb together. But uh, yeah, I'm a little bit worried. I've been mixing it at 1% or a little bit stronger. It's been hot as hell all day and it's still mushy. Oh, maybe it's okay. But, uh, <laughs> hopefully she goes off. That was a big day. I'm gonna have a beer now. <laughs> Look at that sexy looking hoop. <laughs> I was working on it for four hours and the bottom layer was where I was really going 1% or slightly above 1%. So it just shows you how long you can work on it with polyester resin in hot weather if you mix it to 1%. For one kilogram of polyester resin, unwaxed, putting about 10 millilitres in. Sorry for using free dress. I couldn't wait to see what it looked like. Looks all right. A little bit dry. Will it still be the best Bertram on the planet? Oh yeah. <laughs> I think I got all the screws that were holding the front in. So it should crack off pretty easy and I'm expecting it to weigh at least 20 kilos because that's how much resin I put into it. But that doesn't include all the fiberglass and basalt cloth and honeycomb. Because the honeycomb's like I might be better off taking that off. She's weighty. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to pick it up. <laughs> 50 kilos? Uh, 40. <laughs> 40 kilos. And, uh, awkward as hell. It doesn't have much twist in it. That's me picking one end up. That's good. I want to see what the other side looks like. Might fall. <laughs> Happy with it? Yep. That's fine. If I made it out of wood, it would have been even heavier. <laughs> uh, it would have been... That's all right. And this isn't the final shape. I've oversized it the whole way because I don't know exactly where the actuators are going. The best way to find out is to dummy fit it. But this is going to be the top. And that's the underside of it. I've just got it blobbed there, but how good does that look? These are just balancing, so I'm walking awfully gently. Starting to look a little bit better. Those actuators are strong just like that. Now onto the top window This frames. is how close they are to each other. It's a bit hard to see at the moment because I haven't cut these down to size. But the way I'm finding out how to cut them to the right size because I've oversized the channel is uh, by just eyeing it up with these bits because I know that from here to here uh, was from the center window to the side pillar. <laughs> Just double checking it like this, and I'm glad I did because I'm out. <laughs> Not exactly with the curve, but she'll be right. 
Every time I need to use something, I have to fix it first. Hopefully that is the centre of where the hoop needs to be. That's what it looks like at the moment with the actuators just blobbed in at the moment. They're just the posts, the top window frame just blobbed in at the moment. And then the uh, hoop that holds the whole lot together eventually. Uh, I might try and make the back pillars just so it looks like it's something. And remember, this is all oversized at the moment. This is gonna be really skinny. I'm just happy that the hoop is fitting. <laughs> I was worried that I'd screwed the top window frames in on the wrong angles because I oversized them. It was difficult to find out uh, where, where I had to um, cut them. And you can see that I buggered up some of the cuts, but that's okay. Nothing some silicon can't fix. That one, I'll probably do a little bit of glassing because uh, I do have to bulk all of this up. And then the actuators will go through the, the top frame and the hoop. So this hoop is going to be cut down massively. I don't know what I was thinking there, but it's going to be really weird to handle when it's really skinny. Uh, hopefully she doesn't snap. <laughs> But yeah, I'm gonna try and focus on getting these back side pillars done so that I can bring it out of the shed and show you guys what it looks like. And so I can have a look. I've waited a very long time to get to this stage. Can't really see it from this angle, so I'll bring it out the shed to have a look. But I think the side pillar looks all right. The roof is gonna be shorter than I intended because I'm trying to make it look sexy. <laughs> But I've got a, another idea for the roof. Something I have come to the conclusion is as soon as I get this hoop and all the frames sorted out, I'll uh, strip everything off, finish all the parts, paint all the parts, paint the deck. I won't split the deck again. I'll make a platform that goes all the way around the boat so I can sand the deck easy. And I'm going to paint, oh, I'm going to glue it together, paint it, and uh, yeah, I just want to have something that looks like a boat and I want to get rid of all of the parts that I have lying around the shed, like the motor. So I'll put the motor in, I'll put all the panels that I've made for it in, I'll put everything in it. I'll uh, probably get some three mil or two mil stainless steel to have a new bash bar because I've gone to so much effort, I may as well go the whole way. Hopefully I can figure out how to get some money and then, uh, yeah. hard to see without the glass but it's uh it looks all right i think i'm happy with the height of the frame i think i'm happy with the pillar as well can you guys please not get the drone look at all of you just leave the drone alone don't like and subscribe if you want to be an idiot